Hey everybody, this is Neil. I'm back with another scouting report, this time of Sword and Fire Manila. Historical module number 11 from uh, Multiman Publishing, of course. This one's probably been in the works for quite some time. Years, if not longer than a few years. It's probably in, been in the queue for a long time. And it's now finally available. It details the uh, Battle of Manila in 1945. As most people know, uh, MacArthur was basically forced to retreat from Manila, from the uh, Pearl of the Orient in 1942. And uh, he had the famous quote, I shall return. And he did return in February of 1945 to take back Manila and the rest of the Philippines, but this specifically focuses on the Battle of Manila in 1945, February, February 1945. And uh, as usual, I'll go through the special rules real quickly, the counters, the map, which is enormous, I believe, in this case. There are six panels that go together, and you need to play all six for the large campaign game. Um, and I'll go through the scenarios, the standalone scenarios that play on certain portions of those six maps as well. So let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. Again, try not to damage. I'll open this up off screen, have it all organized, and then I'll be back in a GIF. Okay, now that I have it unpacked, let's uh, dig and do it. Here's the packing sheet. We have the box, six map sheets, map sheets, map sheets, one through six map panels, uh, one reduced size planning map, four counter sheets, 25 ASL scenarios, SF1 through SF25, chapter SF, pretty hefty for the uh, campaign game, and all the special scenarios, four, special scenario rules, 40 pages, and three chapter dividers for the campaign game. Let's take a look at the, the special rules. Chapter SF for Sword and Fire. I think there's about 10 pages of rules and the rest is um, primarily details on all five campaign games uh, and then the, all the refit, refitting phases um, between campaign game dates well, let's go step through these real quick. Got 23 sections across these 40 pages. So as usual, most of the beginning rules are related to special terrain that's outside of the normal ASL chapter B that we're all used to. Storage tanks, cemetery walls, the aquarium, atrium, gates, intramuros, parapet, probably for the, a lot of this has to do with the fort probably, which you'll be able to see on the map here shortly. Wrought iron fences, trolley tracks, lots of uh, new special terrain. Tennis courts, which I've seen before in various scenarios. Palm trees, tree stumps, coconut groves, coal pile. And then we have a bunch of definitions, pretty standard for a campaign game, keep you on track. Uh, then we get into the section, uh, um, the beginning of the campaign game sections. And there are five campaign games of various sizes. And I'll show you those shortly. Here's where they start. Campaign game one, <clears throat> excuse me, clearing the North Shore. It's six dates. And... Uh, Campaign game one map. They don't have it laid out graphically, but it tells you like only hexes north of the Pasig River on map sections one and two are playable. So this plays maybe one and a half map panels. And here's campaign game two, fighting for the fortresses. It is 10 campaign game days and it uses one panels one through four, all or at least some of them. And then here's campaign game three, first cavalry moves north. It is, there's various phases to it, two phases, six campaign games each. So it's a 12 
and it uses phase one uses two map panels phase phase one two map panels phase two uses uh, two different map panels from the looks of it and campaign game did I miss one? Oh, four right here the walled city seven days uh, and it uses one two one and three so two map panels and then here's the big one destruction of the pearl this is the full the full monty the full thing uh 15 campaign game days it uses all six map panels this is the monster campaign game here that uh, has everything and then after that as usual we've got all the refitting phases perimeter markers how to mark perimeters escape if you happen to be trapped within a perimeter and try to escape your units during the refit phase lead a battle hardening sand adjustments and uh, for those unfamiliar with the campaign game, you have to go through basically all these steps between the dates of a specific campaign game. And then we've got our American Reinforcement Group chart. Looks like you maybe have a pool of 30 different units that you can buy with campaign purchase points. And then here's the Japanese, pretty much about equal amount, about 30 or so, I'd say, using Japanese campaign purchase points during the refit phase you can buy units uh, and then we get into you know more more of the refit Japanese leaders fortification purchase initiative determination um, between campaign games game dates during the refit phase each typically each side draws a chit an initiative chit and then you reveal it at the end of the refit phase. I believe it's usually at the end of the refit phase. And then that dictates kind of what's going to happen. Obviously, if both uh, players choose attack, there's going to be attack. But depending on, oh, you, you can see here, if both sides pick idle, then the day is idle. I believe you go through the refit phase again. Um, if the Americans pick idle, then Japanese attack, Japanese attack, and vice versa. Uh, American attack, dual assault, or American and Japanese attack, dual assault. Maybe that has a special definition that's uh, listed in here guess i'm jumping into the uh details of campaign games probably too much and here uh, here are all the uh the credits on the uh researchers designers play testers map development cover art etc layout etc Uh, Japanese vehicle note must be a special vehicle specific to Manila and then a lot of footnotes sort of we're used to seeing these at the back of ASL chapters footnotes that detail the reasoning why certain things were done within the rules sections of the game of the campaign game and then we have a few pages of historical background probably having to do with the design and history obviously of Sword and Fire Manila. There's maybe five pages of that. And then bibliography for those researchers and readers. Uh, Manila fort Fortification Purchase Record. Um, re uh, refit Group, Reinforcement Group Purchase Record to keep track of what you bought on, purchased on what campaign game day. Manila Campaign Game Game Roster. And then a just typical black and white of the overall map. And there is a planning map in this. It's a smaller version in full color. I'll see if I can fit that on. And I'll do a flyover of the full map because there's no way it's going to fit on this. No way. Okay. Uh, the dividers. What do we have? We have basically these are the same. Similar. Not the same, but similar. Uh, American and Japanese campaign game force organizers. Okay, pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. And then we've got a uh, sword and fire scenario aid chart. Keep track of 
if you're playing the physical version of the game, keeping track of all your information for the particular date or scenario and a uh, color map, small color map. This is not the planning map. This is just a small map color of the one that I showed previously. And let's look at the counters. Probably nothing. I haven't gone through the counters. These are probably just duplicates of all the uh, uh, American and Japanese that we've seen before. I don't know if there's anything special or different in here, specific to Manila. I didn't notice. So, yeah, these look pretty good. I'm happy with my, uh, at least my version of it, punching and printing. Looks nice and centered. Always worried about getting off-center counters. There's four sheets. This is sheet two, two of four, Japanese. There are assault engineers on both sides, quite a few counters. I noticed the, the Americans had a bunch of assault engineers with uh, like four smoke exponents. Same with the, the Japanese here. And perimeter counters, American vehicles. Got some LTVs and it's some dozers. Oh, this looks this looks like it'd be fun to play with. I don't know if I can get it on there. Hundred and five millimeter plus flamethrower main armament. Looks like that would cause a lot of havoc. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> British uh, three-inch mortar alternatives. I believe these were, oops, over here. I believe these are included in, maybe the reprint of Hollow Legions included some of these as well. And they're in, they're in here too. And finally, uh, Japanese um, ordnance. I just noticed the Japanese have no They have no vehicles. Oh, here we go. Well, they've got, yeah, they've got these special vehicles. I had the note about them. That's the only vehicle, at least in the counters included. Maybe there are some of the scenarios that uh, counters already exist for that you can pull from. I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, and some bunch of utility counters, smoke, white phosphorus, rubble, cellars, etc. bomb crater. That's it for the counters. Let's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, let's thumb through scenarios real quick. And these are completely separate from the campaign game. These are, um, I think all of these take place on the, uh, on the Manila maps. Yeah, sometimes in campaign games, I'll put in some scenarios that are played on normal geo boards, but it looks like every one of these scenarios, all 25 of them are played on sections of uh, one or more of the map panels here. So we've got uh, Race to the River, Power, <clears throat> Power Struggle on Provisor, the Grim Reaper's Lair. I'm trying to keep an eye out, see if there's many Japanese vehicles. I imagine there probably are not. Light them up, No Safe, safe Refuge. Now, these ones that show a full map panel, these map panels are huge. So even these standalone scenarios are going to be quite, quite large um, in some of these uh, cases. Del deliver us from evil. Breaking into the slammer. Meeting at the Elks Club. First, do no harm. Yeah, we have some, looks like trucks, maybe, for the Japanese. Venture into carnage. Sounds ominous. High rent hooligans. Follow on. Venture into carnage. Or no, sorry. Yeah, and change, a change in government. 
checkout time. You can fight City Hall. The price of postage. Let me guess. This has something to do with... Yeah, post office. Secure a post office. The price of postage. Uh, no greater love. This is on a pretty small section here. Struggle without end. Assault across the Pasig. Probably pronouncing that wrong. And the walls come a tumbling down. Fortress within a fortress. Through the beach into the fire. A mass for humanity. Bamboo spear bonsai. That's an interesting uh, map layout. Iwabuchi's sarcophagus. Dash for the stairs. And lastly, a change in government. And I was looking at these, and it looked like every single one of these scenarios was designed by David Roth. All 25 of these scenarios were. Must have been a labor of love for David <laughs> to do all these scenarios. And I imagine he did the campaign games as well. So that's the 25 scenarios. Let's take a look at the planning map. We All we have left are the maps now. Planning map. Planning map won't even fit on, on here. The planning map's as big as... jeez. <laughs> oh, as big as some... Uh, you know, third-party campaign games like uh, Lone Canuck Publishing. They're, some of their full maps are basically this size. But this is the shrunk-down planning map. And I imagine you could use it to check lines of sight if you have very thin uh, string and a magnifying glass. You could use it maybe to check line of sight on the side. But uh, I guess you could use this... But, it's meant for it to be a planning map, to give an overview without having to set up multiple tables to set up the full map. Okay, So that is the planning map. And then we have the Monster 6. I'm not even going to bother to open these up because even folded up, they barely fit in my my view. My camera would have to be up on the ceiling probably to see these folded out, maybe even further than that. So, as usual, uh, let's insert a flyover video right here. Okay, here's the flyover of Sword and Fire Manila. From this distance, I am upstairs looking down from our balcony. You can see the size of it, but let me zoom out just to give you an appreciation of the size. It is basically as wide as our couch and as deep as our couch. So let me go downstairs now and we'll do a close-up flyover. Here we are back downstairs. Here is a flyover of Sword and Fire Manila map. Oh, I'm just kidding. That is the planning map. Here's the real map. Let me step back. There's our couch. It is a big monster map. Like I said, if you have units right in the center, right around there, I don't know, and you had it set up on a table, I don't know how you could even reach them. You'd have to have a really good back or really long arms. This uh, map, I have a few critical hit modules. This rivals some of those huge maps that I have. It's, it's one of the bigger ones I have. And to be honest, it may suit itself better for playing Vassal. At least if you're playing the full campaign game, which uses all six of the map panels. I have to say I'm not really a fan of the gloss finish. I have the blinds up. 
on our window. And even so, I'm getting reflection off of the uh, glossy finish. So I'm not a huge fan of the gloss, to be honest. There's a fort. Fort Santiago. And it just keeps going and going. Lots of streets, lots of buildings. Tons of rubble and shell holes. Now, <clears throat> some of the smaller campaign games, they use one, even two maps. Even using two map panels. Fitting this on a good sized kitchen table is a stretch. You go to four map panels and you see you need a big table six there's no way there's no way the way the common household has a table big enough to fit whatever it ends up being seven six by six or seven by seven feet you have to have a special setup to play the full campaign game anyway that is it for the map flyover it's just too big to take it all in Let's jump back to the main video right now. Okay, that was it for uh, the flyover of Sword and Fire in Manila. Um, lot to it. Good, pretty good price too. At least if you got on the uh, pre-order for nine, I think it was ninety-nine dollars. I mean, you get five campaign games, twenty-five scenarios six huge map panels it's debatable if anyone has a table to set up all six map panels someone's put a image on facebook showing all six map panels and the table was enormous i'm not even sure you could lean to the center if you needed to move a counter around but 99 dollars. i don't know how much it is now maybe it's a 120 at full price um, after the pre-order but you get quite a bit as usual, it's a massive historical module for advanced squad leader. And uh, I'm looking forward to at least trying some of the scenarios. I don't know when I'll get to the actual campaign game. But I'm anxious to try, at least try dip my toe into some of the scenarios and, and try those out. So that's it for this scouting report. Hope you found it useful. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please leave feedback below if you have the time and give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the Scouting Report.